Okay, so we'll talk about branch and bound method today. Okay, uh, and the reason for why I'm covering this particular topic is uh, because this is probably the only uh, method I'm going to cover on uh, discrete optimization methods. Um, so problems like integer programming can be solved using branch and bound method. Uh, and I'll basically give you an idea as to why uh, duality could be important sometime. Okay. So here is my problem. I want to solve min over fx such that hx equals to 0, gx is less than or equal to 0, and x is in 0, 1 raised to n. Okay, so it's not closed interval, it's just discrete set. So I'm going to just define my capital X to be 0, 1 raised to n. Okay, we want to solve this problem. Now let's say my n is n is of the order of 100. Then my x, the size of x is of the order of 2 raised to 100, which is equal to 10 raised to 30 possible options. Two raised to ten is yeah ten cube, and so that's ten raised to. 10. Okay. So if I want to, if I give you this optimization problem, um, okay. So let me give you a concrete example. So in electricity market, there are probably a thousand generators, and someone needs to decide which of those generators have to be switched on and which of them have to be switched off. So n is of the so switching on is 1 and switching off is 0 and you can formulate an optimization problem of this type and n will be of the order of 1000 because you have a 1000 generators so you have 2 raised to 1000 raised to 300 uh, points in and the naive way to solve this problem would be to enumerate for every value of x Enumerate what the function fx is for all feasible points, and then pick whatever the minimum value is. Okay, and that seems uh, pretty difficult because you have 10 raised to 300 possibilities. So that's uh, it's going to take probably several billion for you to enumerate all possibilities and figure out what the minimum value is going to be look like, what the minimum value is, and what the optimal solution is. Okay. So we need to come up with a better method that can solve problems of this type. Okay. So branch and bound is an exact method. Okay. So it will give you a solution exactly. So therefore, the number of time it will run, the amount of time it will run may be pretty large. Okay. But I still want to give you the flavor of what this method looks like uh, because it's very different from what we have done so far. So here is the basic idea. I have this set capital X. I'm going to divide this set. Okay. And then I'm going to apply what is known as the bounding principle. principle is to identify in which of the sets the optimal solution may lie. Okay, that's the goal. We need to identify among these two partitions which of the set sets is likely to contain the optimal solution. Then again do the same thing um, iteratively. 
not the probability it will be with certainty you will know that the minimum would lie in this particular case the absolute minimum yeah yeah the absolute minimum so the what kind of assumption would you like to have because see the is in 0 1 so you can't really do continuity or anything Is the real, any assumptions on the relaxation of f? So typically, yeah. So I think I think what you if, if n right. to be differentiable. So in most cases, yes, that's going to be the case. Okay. But the bounding principle is uh, let set of x. Such that less than equal to f x x y f two over b is defined as not defined, but it's a upper bound on. Min of f x such that x is in y two so if f two bar is greater than equal f no is less than equal to Then y one can this in So that's one option. So Q star could provide one lower bound. Um, could be by relaxing this x instead of being in. You could have closed interval zero one raised to n. Okay, so that's another way to get a lower bound. But those are the two essential methods to get a lower bound. Okay. So what thing if the Lower the y one. So let's say this is my y one and this is my y two. Let me change it. My y one and this is my y. If my lower bound over y is greater than the upper bound on y two. Okay, so this is an upper bound. of the minimum over y2 uh you know i haven't written the constraint but let's assume that the constraints are satisfied so y1 and y2 would satisfy these two constraints okay um so this so f2 bar is an upper bound on the minimum value in this so if the upper bound on minimum value here is lower than the lower bound on the minimum value here then it means that i can complete that from the optimization problem okay <coughs> and just look for the optimal this okay is that clear so i'm going to disregard now what i'm going to do is i'm again going to partition this y2 into y21 
and y22 and then again I am going to the bounding principle There and so on. So yeah. sometimes you find this set in order that you figure out um, in y1 the minimum will not occur in the yes. set. Yes. So because of this assumption, assumption, uh, you are assured that you're in y1. So you kind of cut down the size of the set substantially in every iteration. Yes. Right. Um, so, then how do you go from finding simply an approximation of the minimum value, you don't know what the relationship is to it, to getting a lower bound and upper bound? So, your question is how do you get? Okay. So, For the lower bound, one is I can find Okay, so I pick any feasible that can serve as a lower bound or I compute what Q1 star is in that. Yes, yes. So then you have to take the partition and read. Well, this condition is not satisfied based on how well you Then there are many things you need to try with to get a better, a tighter. So instead of using Q1, a better, tighter upper bound, a tighter, uh, you could also. I want to minimize you do something you expand the set instead of being it in making it integer a real number value then in that case you could set this one and this one can be solvable because this is efficient. So then you get uh, a lower bound on this particular optimization. Uh, you of course have this because it depends. So this particular set would depend on how you define y1. So gives you an idea about lower bound to the minimum. Yes, yes. And so that's where the domain expertise will come in. And in electricity market, you kind of know from the past this particular situation or this particular how the solution is going to look like and put the partition set accordingly in order to get a better bound. Um, you know, so you, you have to have some sort of domain expertise. Just give you a problem of this type. No 
prior experience, it's going to take a lot of time for you to solve such a problem. Yes, yes, uh, and you will put a low number, and uh, the only way you can guarantee how far or close to the global minimum you are is by finding out what is what is your solution f of x tilde star, which is the optimal dual solution, right? And this gives you an upper bound on your optimality guarantee. So typically, you would branch and and you know get an optimality guarantee. You will try something like this. Okay, you will try to find or get what this value is or on this value, and that gives you the, some guarantee on what the error is in your solution. Okay, so that's where dual problem or dual optimization problem becomes very useful. And I'd mentioned it in the past. I've read it in a paper. I think in 2000, written in 2008. Or that typically in electricity markets that you know I've talked about, uh, this error is your optimal value. If you divide this by f of x tilde star, the order of so that's the of optimality uh, in, in certain markets. Okay, is that clear? Branch and bound. So branch, then bound. And then bound. And assuming these conditions, branch again this set, and then start bounding, and hopefully we will converge to the optimal. Set. Problems. So these are optimization. So there may be routines that will be written within Mac that could probably download some package uh, and use that to solve some of these problems. Okay. But this is not this is the only algorithm for integer optimization. Okay, there could be other algorithms. I mean there are several books written on optimization over in so you will have lots of other methods to solve integer programming problems. Um, so if integer programming is something that you plan on doing in the future, we can sell some of those books. This is this was probably one of the first methods written in and lots of other methods like in the book. We started with gradient descent that uses Well, yeah, yeah. Then you are essentially looking for a miracle, but okay. miracle don't happen on any basis. But again, you can do this. So you can get a solution for the set zero raised to n thing. Still does stuff, and then you have to find this. This okay. Yeah. So you're saying this one, right? So, so let's try. Let me give you some idea. Say is and you 
that tip. This is the hyperplane. So gx, this will be gx equal to 0 line. And so everything here, part of the set, everything above is. I'm going to make it x in square. Okay. Now you are in a different color. You are allowing your. The second would be this set. You continue to set. As well, this is a linear function, so we can't happen at the solution will be. You can. integer valued point so therefore whether the application of right you could employ employ is you have these constraints you can add some more constraints without changing the the original Basically, uh, yeah, you add some to make sure that you are reducing this. You have expanded the size by making it uh, convex. Make sure that the size is as small as possible, not pretty large. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to very quickly wind up with a huge number of partitions we potentially have to check. Is it normally done probabilistically for your, us, the subdivisions? Because otherwise you You, you could, yes. I, I think that that may become a problem and I don't know. There may be efficient algorithms already to deal with that kind of situation. I just don't know. If you want to, if you want to make okay. So you want to set up a power plant. 
you want to figure out which location I need to set up this power plant problem and then you figure out okay here is where I'm going to set up okay. uh, you have some machine learning problems training not training you have input data and you have output data classification data and based on that you set up a static optimization problem you learn parameters for your for your classifier and that's it and then you encode it. I mean particularly in medical data classifiers which once you solve the problem, once you have a lot of training data you solve the problem. You plug in the X star value in and then you use that everywhere. where you need to make decisions that you which is given by just for simplicity. your question is function of x of t so certainly you will look at so in real life you will look at the profit and then you will decide how much of it you want to invest so in some sense yes but once the xt is given then ut is just a variable 0 0.1 0 0.5 0 0.15 and so on okay we'll get in a few minutes okay what is the policy and what is the control Okay, this is uh, one example of optimization where my current decision affects the future. So this is the experience of 
future state and the future future time will affect the eventual future state and therefore what we do now is going to is going to affect the future state a lot eventually want to max total production so question is how do you these values of q1 all the way up to u that's why it's a dynamic optimization problem unless the static case once that's fine you have so i'm sure many of you might have taken 3 energy only on enough energy later problem which is the distance from the
time so that the overall cost, in this case is the total fuel consumption. state is going to you can run this optimization again and again as the situation
Okay. So, exactly is 